Hello everybody, you're very welcome to this episode of Object Oriented Programming. In this episode we're going to look at what are called modules and packages, which are ways of organizing your Python programs once they start to grow into loads and loads of programs. So, exactly as I said, the more classes we create, the more we need to find a way to organize them. In Python, when you create a file in Python, it's called a module. If I have two files in the same folder, then all we need to do for one to talk to the other is just call it by its file name. This is absolutely amazing. This is so much more simple than a lot of other object-oriented programming languages. So we should be very thankful we're using Python. Let's think of an example that might clarify this a little bit. If I'm building an e-commerce system and it has Python programs in it like product, customer, inventory, and database, and the database Python module contacts the, the live database, rather than have each of the separate other programs contact the database, we can have one Python module called database that contacts the database and the other three product customer and inventory contact the database module. If I have a, a file or a module as we'll call it in, in Python and it's called point docstrings.py, then if I want to include that whole file, all of the classes, all of the methods, all of the attributes from that file into another file or module, all I say is import point doc strings. Now it's important to remember what you import is the file name or module name, not the class name you're looking for at this level. And then if there is a class in point doc strings called point, then I can declare an instance p1 by just saying point doc strings dot point. And this is what it'll look like in code. Now, just for terminology's sake, whatever the calling program is, when I import point doc strings into it, then we say it's part of that program's namespace. The namespace is a list of methods and classes that are available to a particular program. If we want to just take a specific class though from that file, all we say is from point doc strings import point and then we declare instances of point as normal. So let's have a look at that in code. Exactly the same as normal. The only difference is instead of importing something from the math library or something, we're just importing something from another file in the same directory as the, the file we're calling it from. And just in case there's already a class called point in our existing namespace, then we can use the as clause to change the name of the imported one to something different. So if we say from point doc strings import point as pt, then we can declare instances of that using pt open bracket close bracket. And that's how it looks like as code. So that's really handy and effective because it doesn't really change anything except the, the calling. If I want to import more than one class, I can just say from point doc strings import and just specify the classes I want from that point strings file. In 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 practice, although it's easy just easier just to say from doc strings import star, which means bring in all of the classes. In practice, we don't like to do that because it confuses other programmers. They're not sure really what we're doing if we do that. Now, how do we organize different modules? Well, how do we organize files? We put files in a folder and we put create subfolders and subfolders within that. When we're talking about Python, a folder is called a package and um, we, the subfolders are just packages and that's, that's it. So modules are files and packages are folders. So let's say we have the following structure where we have a parent directory with the main Python program and that and a folder called drawing. Inside the drawing folder we have one, two, three files, Python files, and then a subfolder called maths. And inside maths there's two Python files. 
inside each of the folders we can see we have a special file name called underscore underscore init underscore underscore dot py. If you want to create packages and you want to allow programs at one level to be able to call programs at another, we need this init file in in the in the structure for each folder we have stick in an init file and you can leave it blank at the moment but they're there in every case we'll see what kind of text we can put in but we can leave them blank at the moment as long as they're there and then in terms of how we import packages there's two ways based on that one is absolute imports which we've kind of seen already and then the other is relative so an absolute import is where you fully specify the location of the class being imported so let's say in the drawing folder I have a file called point call and I want to get that whole file imported then I can just say import drawing dot point call which is in the folder or package drawing give me the module or file point call and then I can declare an instance of point call dot point if I want to go um, and just bring in the point method I can say from drawing dot point call import just the class point and declare an instance of that or I can bring in the whole thing again by just saying from drawing import point call it's the same as the top one just phrased differently so in the top one we're importing the whole module in the middle one we're importing just the class in that module and in the bottom one we're importing the whole module again and remember to say this in a different way in the top one we have a directory called drawing and a file called point call in the second one we have a directory called drawing a module called point call and then a class within that module called point and then in the third one it's a directory all drawing and a, and a file called point call. Relative imports are different. How relative imports works is as follows: if I'm if I want uh, uh, to import a module from the current directory, the one I'm in, I put a dot in front of the file name. If I want to import from a directory one higher up than where I am, I put in two dots. So let's say in this case, if I want to, if the file point call wants to call point doc strings, just say from dot point doc strings import point. Whereas if the theorem module wants to call point doc strings one up, then you have to say in the theorem module dot from dot dot point doc strings import point. So that's the dot or the dot dot current directory or one directory up from where I'm at. I know we said a moment ago that we can leave init.py blank, but we can also um, put it, information into it. And specifically, uh, if we want to import a class not from the specific file it's in, but from the generic folder it's in, we can use the init.py. So let's say we have the point class and it's in point doc strings. From the main directory, we'd have to say import from the folder drawing from the module point doc strings, the class point. But if we put the following code in init.py, if we said from dot point doc strings import point so if if anybody is asking for point it's in point doc strings then in the main directory we can now say just import drawing dot point instead of import drawing dot point doc strings point which is great it saves us uh, a lot of hassle and really what it's saying is we can simply say from drawing import point and it knows it's there so in essence, what the init.py file is, is converting the drawing package into a module. So it's changing the folder into a file because the folder now knows where to find classes within itself. So thanks very much. Hope that was helpful. We'll see you on the next episode.